What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to showcase to you guys everyone's favorite deck in Union Arena right now in the Hunter x Hunter and Bleach format guys. This green Corapica is potentially the best deck in the format. This is the most expensive card in the whole Hunter x Hunter set. So you know that this is really sought after guys. I'm very excited to show you guys this deck profile. It's absolutely impressive how strong this deck is and how capable it is. The way I built it, it's extremely consistent. So I'm actually kind of worried to show you guys this deck profile. I think we're going to see a lot of it <laughs> in the competitive scene. But without further ado guys, I want to showcase this amazing Kurapika deck to you guys. And I'm interested in your opinions about it. So make sure you comment down below what do you think about this deck. Could I have changed anything in it? I don't believe you can actually make any changes in this. I feel like this deck is complete. We removed the whole Gone package from this deck and really focused on bringing out Kurapikas and giving our energy, on, leaving energy on the board so we can get Kurapikas from Trigger. And it's really showing us that we did really good because it's, it's honestly a very fun deck to play. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right in. We'll start with... Everybody's favorite card. We're going to actually be able to play four finals in this deck. I know everybody's already super excited. A lot of people are bringing these down to two or three just to fit them in. But we were able to play four with no issues at all. Next, we're going to show you guys the special. You have to play four of this special right now. Basically, all decks have eight removal. Their raider and then their specials. Guys, you, we were running the fishing rod, one or two of the fishing rods. We completely removed the Gone Package. You don't need the Gone Package. I believe every time you try to go for the Gone Package or you have it in your hand, it's really ruining the game for you. You're supposed to be pulling out your Karapikas and leaving them on the board and showing the opponent that pressure so he can deal with it. So we removed the Fishing Rods and it's been paying off really well. I think Emperor is much better than Fishing Rod. It gets you that plus 3k and draw. And then a lot of your Kurapikas have impact already, so you're going to get that extra attack as well. Very effective. A lot of times you don't even want to hit impact. Uh, because if you have two snipers on the board, really you just want to get that draw out first. Then impact and snipe uh, with the second one because you don't want to get any of them specialed out. And uh, so yeah guys, very impressive uh, removal there because it draws a card. I believe it's one of the best. Moving on guys, we're gonna go, that's it for the spells guys, we're not running any more spells, just 4 spells, that's it. Now we're gonna move on to your zeros, we're gonna run 12 zeros, we're gonna start with the Zep Piles. No need to really uh, discuss there, Zep Piles is just so competent, he does exactly what we need to do. If we have too many zeros in the deck, or in our hand early on, he could start getting rid of them. We go into Kurapika here for 4, you need the Kurapikas because what's happening is... You are uh, going to need to raid the Kurapika. You need something to start off the game and put it at the bottom. And so the Kurapika is going to help you all out a lot. And then we remove the Gons for these Satots. Your whole goal is to get to 7 energy and to be there consistently every single turn. So if you fall behind or if you feel like you missed one of your cards, that's what Satots shines. You don't really necessarily need him. That's why we're running 12 zeros. You're going to have a lot of zeros. So you're going to be okay to lose him. It's not going to feel so bad to lose him. And if you don't pull a Leorio, you're still going to be able to get that 2 energy with Satots. So really strong supporter unit Satots, in my opinion, is the zero that we were missing in this deck. Now that it's here, the deck is so much more consistent. Moving on, I believe you need a 2 energy generator. I chose the Leorio. I believe it's a little bit simpler, easier to pull out. Now we're running 12 zeros. You might be able to just fit in the two cost, two energy. The problem with that one is when you're sided sideways, when you're rested, you lose that two energy. And I feel like Toshiro is already one of the toughest matchups for us. Really. So since he's such a tough matchup for us, why would we allow him to even hurt us more by playing the two cost active two energy? Instead, we'll just play the one cost two energy giver and we'll lose that zero cost. We'll bring back the zip pile maybe to our hand or something. Unfortunately, you do lose an AP, but I believe this is the more consistent way to get your double energy out better than the other two energy card. And then, guys, to complete our energy, we went ahead and played more one cost. This one cost, in my opinion, is one of the most broken one cost. You don't have another card like this in the game right now, except in Green Hunter x Hunter. This character can give energy in the front line. And it's also a trigger plus 3k active trigger. 
So you get an active trigger, you get the energy, uh, the front line, so when you're at three, you can move forward and still put some pressure on the opponent and still be able to get off your Kurapikas, which is what we're about to show you guys. But yeah, guys, the deck was missing something, and I believe that something was this melody right here. After we played the melody out, the deck has been so much more comfortable, allowing you to get a little bit of aggression early on and not feel so bad. Now, you don't want to pull out Melody too early, especially against Purple, because they can remove it. If you lose this Melody and you can't get to 3, you might lose a couple of turns, and doing that will make you lose the game. So you don't want to pull her out too early, but when you are ready to pull her out early, because you're going to need uh, to pull her out anyway to get to 3, then 5, then 7, then this is going to really activate you. And if you didn't draw Leorio early or any of your two energies, it's just going to make your game so much smoother. Also, it's an active trigger. It's really, really not bad at all. Moving on, guys. This is what Melody is activating. You're, what you need to do is get to 3 ASAP because your 3s are giving you 2 energy. So you have the Kurapika here for three energy uh, for the 2 energy at 3. And also, we have Basho, the 3 energy for uh, the 2 energy for 3. Guys, before him, I actually was really losing games. I was getting to 3 energy consistently, but I could not get to 5 consistently. After I added the Satoids, it helped a little bit, but after adding Basho, now the game is just so much more consistent. So now we can really, really consistently get to 3 with Melody, with Melody's help, and then now we can consistently get to 5 with Basho's help, which are the numbers we're trying to hit. We're trying to hit 3, 5, and 7, so we're trying to hit all the odd numbers. And uh, just adding a set of bashers, and you're going to have to add a set of bashers. Not only is he a two energy stepper, so you can move around. Uh, if you uh, if you make a mistake, and move him around. He's also an active trigger, so he's going to help you out a lot in this deck. He's not going to feel bad at all for playing, and he's just going to keep you activated all the time. I think he's the missing piece that I was missing. Now that I added him, the deck's just so much more uh, easy to flow. Moving on, guys. We don't have the two cost Kurapika. We completely remove them instead of playing 2 2 or 3 3. We just completely remove the other Kurapikas and we're solid stuck on this Kurapika. We like the color activity from it also because it can bring it out, uh, bring out a melody for us or bring out another blocker. Also, it allows us to go through the deck. And I believe the two cost uh, Kurapika does have a nice trigger, but it's just not as strong as this Kurapika. And we can get to 5 very easily now, consistently. And so, I'm talking about 5, this is the shiny symbol of the deck. This is what activates the deck. Being able to be a... When you play her down, that, uh, that means you're already at 5. When you play her down, you can go to 7. And basically, the second you play her down, you're guaranteed that you can pull out a Karapika. So, if you can look at the top 4 and find a Karapika from there, that's going to be insane to be able to raid from Neon and then raid again from your hand. But if not, you can still gain value. You can bring out anything you want in this deck and also you can bring out your Kilua to support you so Kilua is going to be your supporting extra removal so once uh, a, a big thing about this deck is it really can push out a lot of uh, damage very early and it can have some Kurapika's five costs sitting in the back end that it uh, you're allowed to be able to add a little bit more removal. Now you have the special, you have the Kurapika 7 cost, but with the Kilo you have 10 removals now, and the Kilo is really solid. You're always at 5, so this is not bad at all. It's not hard to play out. And uh, if the sniper's on board, you basically just moved so far forward that the opponent will never be able to come back. Playing this while you have the sniper on board, removing the opponent, having something uh, for you to defend with next turn, and then uh, it is two action points, unfortunately, but it's really worth it because a lot of the games, what happens is the opponent is not able to remove both your Kurapikas. You can only remove one seven cost Kurapika. That's where Kilowell comes and shines and gains uh, value from, not, from the opponent not removing the cards earlier. Finally, guys, we're going to have to run four Kurapikas. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've been playing a lot of Kurapika. My average is one Kurapika per trigger per game. So there's one Kurapika and triggers per game. So if you can play the game around knowing that you're around staying at seven energy, you are almost guaranteed to hit one Kurapika from your triggers every single game. So as long as you set yourself up for seven energy, this guy is going to come out and he's going to be extremely solid. I have a game 
where I was playing Kurapika mirror match and my whole board was really set up. When I hit this in the trigger against my opponent, he was able to shut down my winning turn, completely stop my advantage and then he had the, the Emperor's uh, time. Plus he raided another Kurapika and I just could not come back from that. So he was able to get two snipes out and two impacts and he emptied my board and I could not come back because I didn't have any more Kurapikas. So really come in, bring, bringing this out from the triggers can really flip the game. Uh, even if you are winning you can start uh, losing <laughs> if you see that Kurapika in front of you. But yeah guys so this is it. This is the list. Interest in your opinions guys. What do you think about this list? We worked really hard for it. I'm very excited to show you guys this list. I think it's the most consistent Kurapika list in the game right now. We just completely tossed away the guns. But I'm still interested in your opinions, guys. What do you think about this list? What would you change? Did I make any mistakes? I really don't believe so. But without further ado, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody.